Now at 5 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, the suspect accused of the murder of an Edna cheerleader is set for arraignment tomorrow morning. And there's outrage following a North Texas charter school's decision to suspend students after a student showed up to campus with a gun. And a presidential candidate has dropped out of the race. The latest elections results from last night across the nation. And coming up, we'll be talking about the cool front that's coming in our direction. It won't be here till Friday, but on Friday, we have a chance for some shower activity around here. Wouldn't that be nice? We'll talk about it coming up in just a moment. Representative Colin Alfred will take on Senator Ted Cruz in the November elections after his big win last night. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon and thanks for being with us. I'm Karina Garcia. Voters will head to the polls on Tuesday again, May 28th, to decide two runoff elections in the Republican primary. Brad Tucker is running for Victoria County Commissioner Precinct 3, a Victoria native. Tucker worked in the construction industry for 25 years and owned and operated Tucker Construction Company for 18 years. Last night, he won 35% of the vote. Commissioner's Court deal a lot. Uh, a lot of what they deal with is construction related. Um, and so I have a lot more construction experience than, than any other candidate, uh, about 25 years as a contractor. This position works with the Victoria County Judge and three other precinct commissioners. Together, the commissioner's court handles the financial decisions of the county. Now, Tucker will face Shannon Martin in this runoff election. Martin previously served the Victoria Fire Department for more than 35 years. He's active in the community through organizations such as the Victoria Livestock Show and the local emergency planning commission. Martin won 49% of the vote last night. Now, Stephanie Bassham ran unopposed in the Democratic primary for District 30. She's an advocate for sustainable jobs with fair wages, affordable housing, public education, and reproductive rights. She will face the winner of the Republican primary runoff come May 28th. In the state representative race for District 30, former mayor of Victoria, Jeff Bocknight, garnered 42% of the vote. His opponent, former Jackson County Sheriff A.J. Louderback, won 40% of the vote. The other two candidates took home 6,708 votes in the race. In Victoria County, 22% of the 56,000 registered voters showed up to the polls. That's about 12,000 people. Across the crossroads, the court hearing for the four former industrial ISD students is set for Thursday morning. At that time, the court is expected to push the case to the next court date. Colin Stumfold, Zachary Kukler, Christopher McCroy and Braxton Warren face charges related to an incident of assault that took place on a bus last April. The four teenagers stand accused of assaulting a fellow student while returning from a road game. Now, the arraignment is set tomorrow morning for the man accused of murdering Edna cheerleader Lisbeth Medina. The Jackson County Grand Jury indicted 23-year-old Rafael Romero last month. He stands accused of intentionally causing the death of Medina while in the course of committing or attempting to commit burglary, robbery, or aggravated sexual assault. The indictment accuses him of causing Medina's head to strike a firm surface. It accuses him of striking her head with a hard object and repeatedly stabbing or cutting Lisbeth Medina with a sharp object or edged weapon. He had overstayed a work visa and he was arrested five days after the 16-year-old was found dead in her Edna apartment. A Victoria man was arrested and he stands accused of four charges. 17-year-old Jet Howard faces two charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, one charge of deadly conduct with a discharge of a firearm and engaging in organized criminal activity. He is in the Victoria County Jail without a bond. And now let's take a quick pause on the news and shift gears to the weather with Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis. Thank you very much, Cutty. Now, well, it was warm today, but not as warm as yesterday when we got up to 90 degrees. Today, we only hit 79. That's more agreeable and more, um, shall we say, we can deal with that. Now, out on the West Coast, there is a little frontal system coming in our direction. It'll be here on Friday, and that is the uh, only chance we have in the next five days of getting any kind of rain around here. So we'll be talking and taking a closer look at that coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you, Karina. 
Mac, thank you. A North Texas charter school where a student showed up to class with a gun. Parents are outraged because their childs were suspended and now face expulsion for what they did not do that morning. Classmates admitted to police that they seen the students gun before gunfire rang out. One student says the gunman told her that day was the day he would act. Others also spoke up and defended their decision. They now say they are being shamed for their response under stress. The teens have suspension hearings on Friday. The latest results from Super Tuesday. President Joe Biden wins the Democratic nomination with Donald Trump holding his third Republican nomination. The two now head towards a rematch come in the November election. Breaking this morning, Nikki Haley dropping out of the 2024 presidential race after winning only one state, Vermont, on Super Tuesday. Her decision makes Donald Trump the presumptive Republican presidential nominee. Sources tell ABC News Haley is not expected to endorse a candidate today. Now, the picture is clear. President Biden and former President Donald Trump will presumably face each other in November's election. Biden and Trump dominating Super Tuesday races across the country, securing delegates with notable victories in Texas and California. For Republicans, Trump winning by large margins in all states except for Vermont, whereas GOP challenger Nikki Haley walked away with her first state of the primary season. They uh, call it Super Tuesday for a reason. This is a big one. Haley winning a portion of the vote, between 20 to 30 percent in some states. Trump, not mentioning Haley by name, says it's time for the Republican Party to be unified while turning his focus to the general election. We want to have unity, and we're going to have unity, and it's going to happen very quickly. For Democrats, President Biden winning nearly all the delegates so far. Biden releasing a statement on the results, saying the American people have a clear choice, writing to millions of voters across the country made their voices heard, showing that they are ready to fight back against Donald Trump's extreme plan to take us backwards. Still, both candidates are facing cautionary signs. Biden continues to see voter pushback for his handling of Israel's war with Hamas. On Tuesday in Minnesota, an unusually high number of Democrats voting uncommitted in protest. As for Trump, his issues stem from suburban and women voters turned off by his message and rhetoric. Looking ahead, President Biden will have a chance to reinforce his campaign message at Thursday's State of the Union address, where for the first time, the entire message will be live streamed from the POTUS Instagram account. Ika Jachi, ABC News, Washington. And Nikki Haley delivered remarks in Charleston after suspending her presidential campaign. The former South Carolina governor said her goal was to ensure Americans' voices were heard, which she did. Haley did not endorse former President Donald Trump during her speech and said she called on him to earn the support of those who backed her. Haley made history as the first Republican woman to win two primary races in Vermont and Washington, D.C. U.S. Representative Colin Alfred is projected as the winner of the Democratic Senate primary in Texas. His win sets up a key matchup in the fight for control of the Senate chamber when he takes on Republican Senator Ted Cruz in November. In remarks at his Dallas watch party, he thanked his supporters and took a swipe at Senator Ted Cruz, who barely won re-election in 2018. The fundamental reason that democracy works is that people elect leaders to represent them and their interests and to try to fix things for them, not to look out for themselves. We've had enough of that with Ted Cruz. It's time to go in a different direction. Alred managed to avoid a runoff against his top opponent, State Senator Roland Gutierrez, who represents the city of Uvalde. Now here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Lavaca wave. Port Lavaca's Public Works Director Wayne Schaffer addressed the city's boil water notice during a workshop February 26th. Plus residents in Sea Drift have created a service to climb, a service club rather, to improve the town and help out their neighbors. You can read these stories and more at the wave.com. Now remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click that notification bell. For now, stay with us. Haiti is facing an increasing rise in gang violence. Straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5, how the country plans to fight the shooting and deadly violence in the streets. And a man in Texas is charged for attempting to scam former Congressman George Santos. The price of his services up next.
Lawmakers in Haiti are looking for a coalition to bring the country out of gang violence that has closed the main airport and prevented the prime minister from returning home. Gangs control 80 percent of the country's capital. Their two biggest prisons were also raided, resulting in the release of more than 4,000 inmates over the weekend. The prime minister faces increasing pressure to resign. He landed Tuesday in Puerto Rico after he was not allowed to land in the Dominican Republic due to authorities closing the airspace. The United Nations says nearly 40 percent of aid missions it coordinated were denied or prevented by Israel in February. The UN also says there were nearly 50 percent increase in the overall number of coordinated humanitarian missions facilitated by Israel across Gaza in February compared to January. But there was a decline in effectiveness of those expanded aid efforts. That was mainly due to the diminished presence of local police after a series of attacks by Israel forces that led to police casualties. Prosecutors charged a Texas man accused of trying to defraud George Santos this morning. They say he contacted Santos and offered to make evidence against him disappear. He told the then congressman he worked with prosecutors and judges and could get the case against him dropped for $900,000. The man told authorities he was trying to make money to get rid of his gambling debts. He also reached out to an, an unnamed actor in California convicted of felonies and a musician and professional athlete. Now, for the past decade, Americans have had access to flu shots protecting against four strains of the virus. But a panel of experts advised the FDA to recommend the next season's flu shots with a different formula. Dr. Batzik, yes. Dr. Berger, yes. It was unanimous. A panel of experts who advised the FDA voted to recommend a new flu shot formula this fall. I personally think that there's a lot of opportunity to leverage this uh, to rebuild trust within the community, especially those who, you know, are the those that are vaccine hesitant, um, showing that, you know, that vaccination isn't just to put more things in individuals' arms, but also just to, to address the current circulating strain. Right now, flu shots in the U.S protect against two A strains and two B strains of the virus, but the next vaccines will offer protection for just three strains as one of the B strains from the Yamagata family hasn't been detected in testing since March 2020. Viruses from this strain were already in decline before the COVID-19 pandemic, and it's believed that precautions people took to avoid the coronavirus finished them off. The FDA is now working with flu shot manufacturers to get the Yamagata strain out of U.S. vaccines in time for the upcoming flu season. And approval of all the necessary regulatory submissions is on track for a 2024-25 PIV implementation for all licensed U.S. influenza vaccine manufacturers. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. Here's a look at some of the top headlines you can find in the queer record. 35-year-old Dondre Carter sentenced to 40 years for a probation violation. He is accused of aggravated robbery while serving a probation sentence for an incident in May of 2021. And Mayor Sarah Post Meyer discusses Cuero's March Madness, several events planned for this month. Read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. In San Antonio, hundreds gathered around the Alamo early this morning to remember the most famous battle in Texas history. The ceremony included reenactments, readings, music, and a wreath laying and a musket tribute. On this morning in 1936, the Mexican army recaptured the Alamo, the battle that lasted roughly 90 minutes. But you know who knows all about the Alamo? Meteorologist, Chief Meteorologist Mac Fittis, historian and meteorologist. Mac, take it away. Yes, I can do a whole half hour on that. In, in fact, I used to be the announcer at the reenactment of the Alamo back when I was in San Antonio. Uh, so um, I know quite a bit about it. But, uh, you know, the thing is, and this is true, uh, while that was happening in the Alamo, things were happening here in Victoria and in Goliad that were part of all that that we sometimes don't get to talk about. Uh, we need to include all that too as well. Uh, well, we'll do that another time. Right now, let me tell you about the temperatures. We got up to 79 today after right now we're at about 76. And that's a far cry from the 90 we had yesterday and that's good. Uh, tomorrow will be again upper 70s to near 80 degrees, but then it's Friday. Good chance, not a good chance, but a hopeful chance 
that will get some sort of shower activity around here. We'll be talking about that coming up in a moment. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Pretty good looking day. Not as hot as yesterday. That was okay. Uh, we do see a lot of cloud cover coming at us from the west, but tomorrow it's going to be interesting. We'll have the overcast, but we may not have the fog. What does that mean? Well, we'll have a high deck of clouds, but nothing down here at the surface because the winds are kicking up now in advance of that front. Where is the little front? Well, it's out there about Arizona. We'll be showing you to you in a moment. This is what I was talking about tomorrow morning. Uh, we're looking in the future for to see what fog develops, but you can see here that because of the temperature and the wind and the spread between the temperature and the humidity, uh, it doesn't look like we're going to have a fog problem tomorrow. It'll be overcast, that's for sure, but uh, limited problems, so that's, that's good. It sort of helps some people out. Now tomorrow, is the, the, as the front gets into Texas, we start seeing possible thunderstorms up here in the orange. That's a slight chance of severe weather up in that region. Now we're way down here and that's uh, for Thursday. Now on Friday, the tail end of that drops through here. And I guess I'm kind of being hopeful that we'll get something out of this. At this point in time, we're uh, not in the uh, severe threat. Um, in other words, that's gonna pass over us. We're, our stable atmosphere is gonna stay on the stable side. So. You know, we'll get something, but not, not much down here. Uh, let's take another look at it. This is Future Tracker. You can see the activity popping tomorrow up in North Texas right there. Then you see it again on Thursday night. And then on Friday, another little last hurrah. That's the one that I'm looking at. It'll be early on Friday when the front finally moves through here and gives us a little bit of change in the weather for the weekend. I think you're going to like the weekend. It's going to be good looking temperatures. Watch this 79 tomorrow, then 82 Friday. And then what happened here? Ooh, only in the upper 60s for the weekend. How about that? Let's have a party. We're looking at uh, tomorrow's temperatures to be, you know, agreeable for this time of the year, not excessively warm, but we'll watch and wait to see how that front does. Now for sure up north, and if you happen to be driving north or you got family up there, just know that it's the beginning of the spring thunderstorm season. Here is uh, what we have today. Now you're gonna see me do this. On this side of this uh, dotted line is the humid air, and on that side is the dry air. That's called the West Texas dry line. And sometimes the thunderstorms pop right there. And so that's what we are starting to expect for Thursday. But, but Friday, the front does come through the area. Friday afternoon, the winds will shift around. And then all of a sudden, we've got a little bit more reasonable temperatures as we get on into the weekend. So overcast, but probably no fog. And looking at a high tomorrow, about 76 out at the coast. For those of you in Cuero, cloudy and a little bit of break in the afternoon sun and temperatures getting up to the upper 70s as well. So here we go, Thursday, still on the um, half and half. It's a half and half, half clouds, half sun, 79, then 82 before the front. Front comes through, high temperature on Saturday, only 67. That sounds good. And 67 as well on Sunday. Just remember that on Saturday night, we spring forward as we start 
daylight saving time all over again. That's your seven-day forecast reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Please scan that. Put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Karina. Thank you, Matt. Coming up next on 25 News Now at 5, we're going to take a look at your stocks. Plus, U.S. lawmakers are voting on several funding bills to beat the government shutdown deadline. This is breaking news from 25 News Now. And this just in, a jury convicted a movie weapons supervisor of involuntary manslaughter in the fatal shooting of cinematographer by actor Alec Baldwin during a rehearsal. The verdict against Hannah Gutierrez Reed came at the close of a trial and the death of cinematographer Helena Hutchkins. Now we'll have more on this on our website and tonight at 6. Taking a look at your stocks, the Dow up 76 points, the S&P 500 up 26 points, and the Nasdaq up 92 points. Oil up 98 cents, closing at $79.13 a barrel. House lawmakers passed a $460 billion package to keep funding multiple fe federal agencies through the remainder of the budget year. The Senate is expected to take up the legislation before a midnight Friday shutdown deadline. Lawmakers are also negotiating a second package of six bills. Some House Republicans oppose the first measure, forcing House Speaker Mike Johnson to use an expedited process to bring the bill up for a vote. Ranchers and farmers in the Panhandle are seeking aid to rebuild after that devastating wildfire. You can read this story by the Texas Tribune on our website, crossroadstoday.com. And stay with us. We're going to take one last look at your forecast. Plus, a public library in Massachusetts is holding their own March Madness to help out with late fees. Plus, here's a look at World News Tonight right after 25 News Now at 5.
Tonight, the state of play after Super Tuesday. What the rest of the country thinks and how they voted. Plus, the ceasefire talks and getting more aid into Gaza. More Americans turn to World News Tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on television. Oscars today to vote come to crossroadstoday.com slash predict to enter that giveaway. The top three winners will receive a $50 gift card to Dick's Food Store. For makeup and hairstyling, you can vote for Golda, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, or Society of the Snow. The Oscar pre-show is right here on KVU TV Sunday at 530 and the Oscars start at 6 p.m. I have to admit, you have to research because some of those movies weren't really popular. <laughs> yeah, I'm but, not going to lie. I think I saw maybe two of those on there. Exactly, and they're mm -hmm. nominated, though. Well, oh, look at the kitties. Look at this. A public library in Massachusetts is accepting cat photos instead of fees for lost or damaged books this month, and we're not kidding. <laughs> it's part of the city's public library march meowness. A photo or even a drawing of any cat erases all your fines. And the first five days of the month, of this month, 400 accounts were already cleared. And the idea is to get people to come back to the library because sure. a lot of these fees date back to the pandemic. And you know, oh yeah, it and, and, and you're worried about going to the library because they're going to catch me and put mm -hmm. me in library jail. <laughs> what would library jail look like? I, a lot of books. A lot of, just, uh, <laughs> but I think it's a great idea to use the kitties to encourage people to come back. Yeah. Good but idea. what about this weather before we head out? Well, I'll tell you, we've got a couple more days of this warm stuff. That's early spring. I'm calling it. And then uh, Friday is that little front. Now it's a 40% chance. I'm Hopeful, begging, please, maybe give us some rain, <laughs> but uh, we'll see how it works out. Uh, certainly North Texas is going to be under the gun. And uh, by the weekend, though, how we do cool down to the upper 60s. That'd I like be nice. that weekend. Mm -hmm. I like that weekend outlook. That would be good. All right. Well, thank you, Mac, and thank you for being with us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 6. World News Tonight with David Muir is up next.